We use remote monitoring mostly for our new patients and we'll, we'll keep them on remote monitoring until we've come to a decision of whether they're going to be able to use CPAP for a long term or whether their CPAP isn't working for them. Before we used remote monitoring, the trial process, the decision making process was very, very prolonged and you sometimes felt like you'd lost patients because you hadn't dealt with the issues early on. With the delays of getting people into clinic, it took us about 147 days to make a decision on patients on average. Whereas with remote monitoring, we've now brought that average down to 58 days. So within 58 days on average, we've set a patient up or we've discharged them. So we've sorted that problem out in a much quicker time frame. We made the process a lot easier in terms of speaking to our patients over the phone rather than having to come back into clinic. For some of our patients, that's quite an issue in terms of mobility and getting around the hospital and actually leaving the home. So we've kind of avoided a lot of those barriers. I think I like using the data because it helps me to, uh, to verify to the patient how effective the treatment is. It's also very, very useful to, uh, to spot uh, problems such as uh, mask leak or if they're struggling with pressures and things. The layout of actually the data itself is quite, quite simple and it's easy to explain to patients. Patients respond a lot easier to graphs rather than just numbers and it gives patients a bit more encouragement to use the machine. In terms of training, uh, we had lots of support from Philips Respironics. Uh, they had, we had several uh, visits from them in, in the hospital to demonstrate how to use it and, uh, and we found it quite easy to, to get up and running with it. Since having the remote monitoring, we know if patients are using the machines straight away. Within a week, we're reviewing them, we're finding them, we're tackling the issues, we're getting them to come in if we need to change or refit the mask or add humidification. In some situations, we can intervene as well uh, remotely. So for example, if the person is struggling to tolerate some of the pressures that the machine is generating, either at the start of therapy or even uh, once they're asleep, we're able to remotely send information to the machine and change the settings on the machine remotely, which then allows them to comply better and get on with it better. I would suggest for anybody that's going to start up using remote monitoring to come up with a good plan. Don't try and just add it to what you're already doing because you'll find you don't have the time to, to do it. You need to come up with a good plan of how you're going to do it, how you're going to implement it and it, you're going to need to do a pathway change to how you are working at the moment.